Oregon and South Carolina meet in the 6-11 matchup in the Midwest region. That is Riley Davis. I am Brian Rao, both of Heat Check CBB, here on the Supers Media YouTube channel, uh, breaking this game down along with a handful of other games. We'll have previews for every single NSA tournament game up on the Supers Media YouTube channel. Riley, this is an interesting game, an interesting matchup. Uh, South Carolina, 26 wins on the season here as a, as a six seed because of some low predictive metrics that would put them in position to be a popular uh, pick to be upset. The Oregon Ducks, on the other hand, would not be here had they not won the Pac-12 tournament uh, over the weekend. Trending in the right direction. Important note for the Oregon Ducks as well. Head coach Dan Altman has not lost a first-round game in his NCAA tournament career. He is undefeated. And as a South Carolina alum, that scares the bejesus out of me. And also the fact that Oregon may have more individual talent. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but let, let's start with South Carolina because the last time we saw them play, they were losing by 30 to Auburn. Is this South Carolina team one that you trust to perform in a spot like this? I do, and I'm going to brush this off to just being a bad matchup when it comes to Auburn because both times that your Gamecocks have played the Tigers, it hasn't been close. That's one of those things you just say, hey, don't have to play them again. Throw the results out the window. This is still a good team, and we can get into the the overall conversation of which roster has more talent, but I believe South Carolina has the best player in this game. Okay. Who would, who would that be? Colin Murray Boyles? It is Colin Murray hey, Boyles. I love I like this that. dude's game. I think he's, I mean, I don't know if he'd be a first rounder this year if he leaves for the NBA, but I think when it's all said and done, he's going to be a first round pick. Love how versatile he is defensively. Uh, I, I love his really ability to do it all. He's good on both the offensive and defensive glass. He's a smart passer. He's way more athletic than you would think just by looking at his build. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he's shooting 80% from the free throw line since either February, maybe even back to January, Brian. I don't know if you've seen that stat, but his free throw percentage is still just 61% on the year, but he really made some tweaks to his free throw shooting, got locked in, and that's improved by leaps and bounds over the, the latter half of the season. He had mono the first like month of the season and didn't really have his feet underneath him until January, late December, January. And that's when he has taken off. Uh, I do think him and BJ Mack are perhaps the most underrated front court in the country. Not that they are the very best, but I, I do think their combination of size and athleticism and ability to stretch the floor. BJ Mack is a very, very good three point shooter um, poses problems for teams, but Oregon's got a, a really good front line as well. And Fally Dante is finally healthy. Um, and he wreaked havoc on the Pac-12 tournament. My goodness, he was the best player on the court in every single game they played. This Oregon team is getting healthy, and that's been an issue for them. Uh, they were at one point 13-3 and and 5-0 and in the Pac-12 and looked real, real nice. Then those injuries hit. Mm -hmm. They went 6-8 uh, and eight over those next 14 games. That caused them to to drop out of the projected NCAA tournament field. Those losses... Um, to Cal, Washington State, UCLA, Utah really hurt them. Uh, but again, seemed to catch magic at the right time. Lightning in a bottle, found their footing, whatever, whatever, whatever cliche you want to use. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have faith in them being that team that was 13 and three and playing like one of the better teams in the country? Or do you think that this was just kind of a, uh, catching lightning in a bottle and not indicative of what we may see from Oregon in the NCAA tournament. You know, I lean more toward the latter. Um, again, you can brush up some of those failures to injury, so I don't want to be too harsh on them. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not like a, a live and die by the metrics guy. I do think it's a useful tool. And it, if I was that way, I'd probably be more dismissive of South Carolina. But I still think they're a really good team who has showed out against top top flight opponents. But even when Oregon was sitting at 13 and three, they were still just 49th on Kim Palm. Uh, even since then they've, you know, they've risen through the Pac-12, uh, the Pac-12 tournament. They went up from 67th to 58th. This is a team that, you know, you give them a ton of credit for beating Arizona. Maybe you catch Arizona off a little bit or overlooking them because, you know, they had their top two seed locked up at that point. The day before they barely squeaked by UCLA though. Um, and, and I, 
kind of like you you made this point in one of the previews we did with NC State that we aren't that far removed from NC State being tied with Louisville for four minutes left. I mean, we're we're not that far off from Oregon losing in the first round to a – I mean, they were down eight early on in that game to a UCLA team that, you know, finished better than they started, but that's because they started what, like five and ten? I can't even remember. It seemed like they didn't win a game for, for – six and ten. I was one off. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I I just think they they have the talented pieces here. They they could surprise, but man, the South Carolina team, I just I, I buy into them rising to the occasion and and, and sees in just living up to the moment of being in the big dance. Yeah, we talked about the front courts. The back court is going to determine who wins this game. Mm-hmm. Quite frankly, uh, Jermaine Cousinard and Jackson Sale said Cousinard, uh, former South Carolina player, transferred to Oregon. Little little revenge game there uh, on, on either side. Um, need to play well. And both have been inconsistent. Shellstad's a freshman. You kind of expect that. When he is on, though, Oregon is fantastic. In their, in their wins this season, he's averaging 14.5 points per game, over three assists on 48.6% shooting. In those losses, those numbers dropped to 10.6 points, just over two assists. Over two turnovers, uh, a barely positive assist to turnover ratio, and a straight forty percent field goal shooting. He he is the key that makes them go. He has the ability to play at a very high level and and carry Oregon's perimeter offense. He's going to be a really awesome player for the Ducks, however long he's there. Um, I, I, I there's not like I see some Peyton Pritchard in his game and, and the way he plays. And I don't know if it's just the the Oregon point card. Um, but I, I do think that he's somebody who is going to be really good and has has that potential. He just hasn't shown that consistently. South Carolina, on the other hand, you kind of mentioned the bad matchup with Auburn. I have some numbers on this we'll get to in a little bit. Um, very experienced, quality college players. They are very flawed, though, if you get them out of, out of the rhythm. When they're at their best at controlling the tempo of the game, that's when South Carolina is able to to win. Uh, mm-hmm. That's when you've had those wins over Kentucky. You've had those wins over Tennessee. You've been able to take care of business in a way that the team picked to finish last in the SEC was not expected to do. The backcourt's going to play a major, major role in this game for sure. Yeah, I, I like – is it Talon or Talon Cooper? Talon. Talon. I thought it was Talon. Talon. I just had to make sure. I, I like his ability to – sort of swing this game and maybe because I, I think there is a chance that you know Jackson Shellstad could just go nuts and America learns this dude's name and falls in love with him immediately. But I like Cooper's ability to kind of heat up as well. I mean you look back at some of South Carolina's biggest wins like the Tennessee game, a game where they scored only 63 points against that vaunted defense. Cooper had 18 points. You know he I mean, he showed up uh, against Kentucky as well with 20. Um, between him and Michi Johnson, you kind of have two two bites of the apple for for just one of these backcourt guys to get hot, get going. And I know what Michi Johnson's percentages say. He's a 31% three-point shooter. Anecdotally speaking, it feels like he's hit a ton of big shots this year, just in important moments yeah. to extend a lead or to take a lead. And, it, again, he's just one of those guys who seems like he is going to, to meet the moment of playing in the, the NCAA tournament. When he is on, he is the closest thing South Carolina has to a star in the backcourt. For sure. Absolutely. We're going to get to our predictions. Let you know those predictions are brought to you by MyBookie. It's the sports book we use here at the Supers Media YouTube channel. And you can bet the nonstop action of the NSA tournament with MyBookie. They have bracket contests you can enter, earn up to $25,000 in prizes. They also have straight bets, prop bets, odd boosts, all, all, all the works there. Uh, but the bracket contest up to $25,000. You can take advantage of our generous welcome offer we have as well. Just use promo code sleepers at sign up and you can get a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. The best part is you can bet on anything, anytime, anywhere. Use promo code sleepers to secure your limited time welcome bonus today. Riley, I'm going to hit you with a, with uh, some stats here because you brought up at the top of this Auburn being a bad match for South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Auburn is, and teams like Auburn are, teams that push the tempo and get after you defensively with a lot of pressure as experienced as South Carolina's guards are, they are not great at handling pressure and playing more up-tempo games. They want to be able to slow things down, play meticulous offense, not the 
Virginia super slow style, but they are totally fine swinging the ball around, giving up good looks to get great looks. If a first action is not there, they can back it out 15 seconds off the shot clock and get into some more actions. They're, they're totally okay with that. They would rather make you defend and find an opening there. On the flip side, they want to keep you out of transition, make you execute your own half court offense. That that's the key for South Carolina. Mm-hmm. When you get in a, in a teams like Auburn that, uh, don't let you get in the half court and, and run as much as they can. South Carolina's got into some issues. The Gamecocks have played seven games this season with more than 68 possessions. There are three and four in those games with a negative 37 point differential combined. In the other 26 games, they've been able to play 68 possessions or less. They're 23 and three in those games with a positive 204 point differential. Oregon averages 67 possessions per game. <laughs> They're under that number. They're not built to exploit what I think is the biggest obvious weakness with the South Carolina team. Might be the alum in me, but I'm taking the Gamecocks. I am too. And I just want to let the listeners know we did not coordinate this, but I promise you I was about to say this game feels like it might not hit 60 possessions because I think South Carolina is going to be able to control the tempo. Not that Oregon plays fast anyway. And uh, I think the Gamecocks get it done. I think it's close. I think there are times where uh, we might be like, dude, this game is so ugly. Why is Oregon in the dance? And I'm going to be like, do I really think Colin Murray Boyles is is a first round pick because he's not really doing it right now. But I think, I think South Carolina gets the win. I'm going to say it's like a, a a drag it out, like 60 to 55 type game. Yeah, that, that feels about right. Uh, both teams may hit, may hit sixties uh, or high fifties. I expect this to be close though. I expect this to be one of the more entertaining endings uh, may not be one of the more entertaining games. I think Alabama and Charleston have that stowed away somewhere, uh, but I expect this game to, to be pretty close throughout. And um, South Carolina has been really good in close games this season too. So that works in the game Cox favor as well. You will we'll be recapping this game no matter what happens along with every other game in the NSA tournament. So make sure you like and subscribe to the Supers Media YouTube channel.